Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of our show. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be romantic. It's guaranteed to make your heart go pitter-pat. Is there an old boyfriend or girlfriend you've never been able to get out of your mind? Have you ever wondered about the romantic path not taken? Well, today, two lucky women and one lucky man are going to be reunited with their long-lost loves. Stay tuned as we revisit the passion of our youth. And we're out. <clears throat> Alex, there's someone here to see you. Oh, I can't right now, Kelly. We're on the air in a minute. He says it's important. Alex Reed? Uh, it's Barker now. It's been a long time. Uh, a long, long time. Uh, I I'm sorry. Oh, come on. Don't make me sing the entire BU fight song to get you to remember me. Peter! <laughs> my God! It's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> the Eagles getting back together was hard to believe. This is amazing. What are you doing here? Oh, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> I get it. We're doing a show on old loves from the past, so my producers tracked down my college boyfriend. Kelly, that's brilliant. Would have been if we'd thought of it. You didn't? You mean you're not here to be on the show? <laughs> this is a coincidence? Well, it's more like fate. Yesterday, I got in my truck to go to work, and what do you know, the transmission was shot. So there's a bus strike in Ithaca. I couldn't go anywhere. I turned on the TV, and there you were. I took it as a sign. A sign of what? That I had to see you again. You came all the way from Ithaca to see me? I've thought about you many times over the years. We were very important to each other. Oh, well, that was also a long time ago. Long, long time. Alex, you're on in five. I'm married now to a wonderful man. <clears throat> in two <clears throat> and one. Welcome back to Alex Now. Alex Barker Now. Today's show is about reuniting great loves from the past. Can flames be rekindled? Will sparks fly again? Stay tuned. We're about to find out. Double sauerkraut, bowl of chili, extra cheese, side of flies. Is this saturated spread all for you? You know, fat grams get a bad rap in society. <laughs> They're actually good for you. They break down, they give you energy. <laughs> you could use some, you look exhausted. I've been spending late nights at the hospital with Teddy. How's she doing? Oh, I don't good. Know Better. <laughs> so how's your lunch? Delicious. He said, pretending to be more interested in the food than the waitress. The waitress? I'll have you know I'm the proprietor here. I own this joint. Great. Intimidate me. Make it really impossible for me to ask you out. What do you mean, out? On a date. You know the thing people who like each other do on a Saturday night? <sighs> it's been so long, I almost forgot. Today's your lucky day, Georgie Witzeg. You just want a refresher course. He is way too adorable. Oh, can you believe those eyes? And look at that smile. He's perfect. For us? What is he? 25? If that. Too bad you're not 18 anymore. Thanks very much. But I've made other plans. Uh, to study. To study? Mm-hmm. For the exam this Monday. You're welcome to join me if you like. 
That isn't exactly my idea of fun. I have a lot on my plate right now. And frankly, so do you. Going somewhere? Huh. Well, I guess we're all going somewhere in the cosmic sense. Well, before you journey on, perhaps you can take care of this. It's a bill. You've heard of it. That irritating compilation of indulgent gift shop purchases, exorbitant room service charges, and oh, excessive long distance calls you've been accumulating for the past week. And you want me to pay up. But I gave you my credit card when I checked in. Well, this morning, the hotel was notified that your credit card had been stolen. <gasps> stolen? Nipped, pilfered, poached. Are you accusing me of taking a credit card? Well, I... Are you thought. saying that I walked into Marshall Fields and waited until some poor, unsuspecting woman wasn't looking and grabbed your Visa card out of her purse? No, are you? Here we are. You have some nerve. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? I know you're not... Ida Goldberg. Then you don't know who I am? No. Good. Hey, stop. Come back here. Stop. Oh, and you can put the terry cloth robe on my bill, too. It's fabulous. Somebody stop that woman. Stop her. Your show was terrific. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'd like to say you're exactly the same as you were in college, but then I'd be lying. You're even more accomplished, more beautiful. And you're even more of a charmer. No, I mean it. You have this inner warmth, this compassion. It explains how people can get in front of those cameras and reveal their deepest, darkest secrets. They trust you, Alex. It's really been wonderful seeing you again, Peter. Do you still like shish kebab with hummus and souvlaki? Good memory. What do you say I take you to dinner at the little Greek place around the corner? Oh, I'm sorry, I already have plans. Then change them. I need to talk to you, Alex. It's important. That's 24. One more. You can do it. You can do it. Billy, do you know my favorite color? My favorite movie? My favorite country western song? I didn't even know you were into country western. Exactly. You know virtually nothing about me, so how do you know I can do one more chin up? Because you're gonna have to. Uh. You want to get into the police academy, the physical's important. You gotta outrun the bad guys, not just spell better than they do. I... Now, come on. You can do it. Come on. 25. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Ah, you did it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'm out of breath. Me too. Hey, check the peephole before you open the door. Are you ever off duty? Look, being an officer of the law isn't just a job, it's a way of life. You'll find that out once you become one. <gasps> oh, thank God you're here. Can I come in? Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, Billy, this is my cousin Reed. Hi. I'm sorry, did I come at a bad time? I thought we were just uh, working up a sweat. I see. Cat, I'm in trouble. Is there anything I can do, ma'am? Billy's a police officer. Oh, I wish there was. You see, um, my mother and I had a slight uh, disagreement, and she kind of booted me out of the house. Well, you know, domestic problems are becoming more and more prevalent these days. Exactly. So I moved into this awful little hotel, a real dump. It was all I could afford. But now it's been condemned, and, and, and I have no place to stay. And so I was wondering if maybe um, you could put me up? Oh, you know, this place is really small. And you know, Mom's in the hospital, and police exam's oh, coming up. Please, cuz it, it'll only be for a week. <clears throat> to serve and protect means your family as well. All right, but for one week. <laughs> She's always been my favorite cousin. <sighs> you won't regret this, I promise. Yeah. 
Halt. What's it stand for? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And what's its significance? If a patient feels any of these symptoms in the extreme, you must halt them before they fall into an addictive cycle. Perfect. We're finished? I certainly hope not. A halt. <laughs> it's just a joke. That's not funny. Oh, God. In fact, it's downright confusing to sit next to me on the sofa, but don't get any closer routine. I'm sorry, Brian. It's not that I don't like you. Oh, gee, thanks. It's just that we're in my house. So? So for a long time, I've never been with anyone else. I've never even kissed anyone else here except for John. So what are you trying to do, make it forever? Better yet, we could have it declared a historical landmark like Jefferson's house in Monticello. Right. We could rope off the rooms <laughs> and give guided tours. <laughs> Mom? Trevor! I got a weekend pass. I thought I'd surprise you. You sure did, honey. You sure did. Um, Brian, this is Trevor, my son. How's it going? And uh, Trevor, this is Brian, M my, um... Uh, study partner. That's who I am. Yeah, and we just finished studying, so he's on his way home. You know, Peter, you were a wonderful writer. Oh. oh, I expected to see you in bookstores across the country by now. Well, you were half right. I, I was in bookstores across the country, only as a sales clerk, not an author. Well, if that's what you want to do, you're happy. Happy. Oh, don't misunderstand me, Alex. I, I love my wife, I do, and my kids. But I, I've never been able to be completely honest with them, with anyone, the way I was with you. Peter, we were in college, staying up all night, drinking cheap wine, burying our souls was a requirement. I shared my poetry with you. That wasn't a requirement. Peter, what you doing? Nothing. Doesn't look like nothing. It's a poem called The Passion of Our Youth. It's for you. Your passion, passion is like, like fuel, fuel sending, sending me soaring, soaring through, through the universe. universe. Your eyes are like stars, showing me the way home. The past is over. green sweater you mean the one with the short sleeves and the little rose button oh, yes I've been looking at everywhere for it <laughs> all my clothes were dirty and and I was hoping to go job hunting you don't mind do you no no not at all but will you do me a favor and be careful with it my mom gave it to me oh of course I'll treat it like it was my very own Oh, by the way, you're out of milk and sugar, and um, you only had enough coffee left for one last cup. You, you know what? I'll, I'll buy some more. No, don't bother. I... No, no, it's no bother. I mean, I, I'll tell you what. I'll go grocery shopping and, and, and clean this place up. It's such a mess. And I'll have dinner ready for you when you come home. Do you like pasta with smoked chicken? I love it. You do all that for me? Of course. You look surprised. Well, I am. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I mean, all those years in high school, I thought you didn't really like me. You never ate lunch with me. You never invited me to go shopping with your friends. I thought you thought I wasn't good enough for you. Oh, that is absurd. We're cousins. Like, like, Patty Duke, like, like the King family. Samantha and Serena. If I remember my bewitched, 
Serena made Samantha's life miserable. Yeah, right, bad example. Kat, you are the best cousin a girl can have. Great earrings. Gosh, don't you think they'd look great with this sweater? Teddy's looking better. You think so? I want to think so. Mm. Keep the faith. Talk about long lost expressions. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Probably from a long lost boyfriend who appeared from out of the blue. Peter Goodwin. Peter Goodwin is here? Oh, Alex, he was the love of your life. Teddy and I thought you two'd get married. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I remember the letters you wrote us from school. You said, his kisses made your heart pound. They still do. What? I kissed him last night, George. Or rather, he kissed me. No, 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 it didn't mean anything. Really, it's, it's just, well, you know, just for a millisecond, I was there. Right back in 1972. You don't want to do something you'll regret. I won't. Only, do you think once you love someone, you always love him? Hmm. I suppose a part of you does. But believe me, it's more than just love. It, there's trust and loyalty and commitment. All the things I have with Big Al. All the things I know you don't want to jeopardize. You're right. Good. I'll tell Peter to leave. I would. Just as soon as I find out what happened. I don't know how I'll make it until tonight. Me either. I'll meet you at your dorm at 11. We'll find a justice of the peace. You were going to elope? Yes. Then I got back to my dorm room. There was a note. Dear Alex, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but it's over between us. I'm leaving. Forget about me, Peter. He just disappeared off the face of the earth. I never saw him again. Until last night? That's why I got so confused. Not only do I not know why he left, I don't know why he came back. Hey, Trav. Hey. Is your mom home? No, she's at the hospital. She's uh, visiting my Aunt Teddy. Can you give her this book for me? Tell her she'll need it for an assignment. Studying on the weekend? God may have created the world in only six days, but grad students have to work seven. <laughs> hey, want to shoot a few? Sure. So, uh, how's army life? Are you, uh, being all you can be? I'm learning a lot. Made some friends. The girl's situation's kind of bleak. So, uh, how are the women in grad school? It's funny you should ask. Hey, Trev. Mind if you help? Brian, I didn't expect you till Monday. Oh, I'm not staying. I just dropped by to give you a book. Well, hey, since you're here, why not stay and have lunch? Kenny, Mom? Kenny, Mom? Can Brian stay for lunch, please? We're having grilled cheese sandwiches, and Mom made peanut butter cookies for dessert. Mom? Yeah? Uh, I said, can you stay for lunch? Sure, if he wants to. How can I refuse? I'm a pushover for peanut butter cookies. Ugh. Blaring. What? What music? I thought you said you were gonna clean up. Oh, I meant to, but um, 
I didn't have time. Too busy cooking? Cooking? You said you were gonna make dinner. Mm. You didn't make dinner. Oh, there's some leftovers for lunch. Wait! What is this? Those leftovers I was just talking about. This isn't working. What isn't? The identical cousin's routine. You make promises you can't keep. You turn my apartment into a war zone. What's next? Okay. Hello? A collect call from France? Oh, yeah. You better find another place to stay. Peter, you have to understand something. What we had was very special. But you can't try to recreate history. If only we could. It's too late. Maybe so. There's still something I have to know. Do I still love you? Yes. <sighs> then why did you leave? Why did you disappear? I wanted to protect you. Protect me? From what? I haven't said this out loud in 20 years. My wife and kids don't even know. What is it, Peter? You remember I was very involved with the anti-war movement. How could I forget? Half our dates were peace marches. I belong to this group. I didn't tell you because some of the members were pretty radical and I knew you weren't into that kind of thing. But that night, we planned to break into a local recruiting office and burn some draft records. That's all, I swear. But it got out of control. The building caught fire. And a night watchman was killed. Oh, Peter. Oh, no. I had to get out of there. And I wanted to come get you, but... If I did, you would have been an accessory. So I ran. I've been running ever since, Alex. Excuse me, Mrs. Barker? Yes? I'm Officer Griffin. Billy Griffin? I'm Kat's friend. Remember we met at the hospital? Oh, yes, yes, of course. And I was supposed to meet her here, but I was running a little late. Have, have you seen her? Uh, no. No, Officer Griffin, I, I haven't. You can call me Billy. Yes, pl and please, call me Alex. Uh, if you'll excuse us, we were, we were just, um, leaving. Excuse us. So this dating thing isn't so bad, is it? It's kind of fun going to dinner, a movie, sitting here in my car wondering what to do next. I should have left a light on. Trevor's out with friends. Well, thanks again. Good night. But at least let me walk you to the door. Oh, no, that's all right. If there's one thing Mom taught me, it's to be a gentleman. Always walk the girls to the front door. Maybe the girls. How about divorced mothers of two? Brian, have you noticed the age difference between us? I noticed it. So? <laughs> so, let me tell you something. I used to date a boy with a car just like this. Back then, it was the latest model. Now it's a late model. Brian, I grew up in the 60s. You probably think Woodstock's a bird. No, I don't. It's a concert. Happened last year. 
I may have to kill you. Not before I do this. Then it doesn't matter that when I'm 110, you'll only be 97. I can live with that. years you've been a fugitive running from the law that's right my god how did you survive as someone else i uh i created this whole new identity for myself to everyone i know including my wife and kids i am barry bellows what about your parents i haven't seen them in 20 years oh but you were so close it's too dangerous when my dad died a month ago, I, I couldn't even go to the funeral. I oh. was too worried the FBI agents would be there ready to pick me up. Peter, I'm so sorry. Well, don't be sorry for me. Be sorry for the man I killed. But you didn't mean to do it. Oh, tell that to his family. I still lie awake at night thinking about them, wishing that there was some way I could make up for what I did. You could come forward. If you only knew how many times I started to pick up that phone. Why didn't you? But what's the point? It's not going to bring back the night watchman. It'll just destroy more innocent lives, this time my family. So you're prepared to keep living a lie? Moving from town to town? Scared to death that one day you'll sign the wrong name or turn when someone calls Peter? And what about your children? Because someday they're going to want to know about their grandparents or about you when you were young. What are you going to do? Keep lying? Because one day, they'll find out the truth, and they'll hate you for it. Alex, I have no choice. Oh, I think you do. I've been running for 25 years, Alex. If I turn myself in now, they'll put me in prison for life. But you'll be free. <laughs> Talk about ironic. Go to jail to be free. No more ironic than protesting an illegal war and ending up a criminal yourself. Peter. You said you loved me. If you do, trust me. Believe what I say. And turn yourself in. Trevor? Studying hard, Mom? Let me explain. What's to explain? I saw the graduates. You don't have to be sarcastic. And you don't have to park in the driveway with a guy practically my age. I thought you liked him. To hang out with, yeah. To shoot hoops with. To be friends. Not to make out with my mom. Is this why you divorced, Dad? So you could sleep with some young guy? We are not sleeping together. And even if we were, it'd be none of your business. I'm still your mother. Then act like it. It says he's wanted for murder and arson. Connection with a fire at a draft board in 1972. I thought he looked familiar. How could he look familiar? You weren't even born yet. Oh, well, once I see a wanted photo, I never forget a face. <sighs> I better call my Aunt Alex. No, no you can't do that, Kat. It's a local call. Well, it, no, it's not that. It's just that if you tell your aunt, she's going to tell him and he could escape. If I don't tell her, she can get caught up in a very dangerous situation. Look, look, I'm sorry, Kat, but as a police officer, my first allegiance is to the law. When you're one, yours will be two. Yeah, that's what you think. Whether I'm a police officer, a center for the Chicago Bulls, or president of the United States, my family will always come first. It appears we have different priorities, you and I. Yeah, it appears we do. I'm calling the FBI. I'm calling my aunt. I've been up all night thinking about what you said. 
I've decided to turn myself in. You sure? I'm positive. I'm petrified, but I'm positive. What made you change your mind? You and an old Indian rug weaver. An old Indian rug weaver? I read about him once when I was working in one of those bookstores. It seems a traveler came across him while he was unraveling a very large, very beautiful rug that he'd spent many years weaving. The traveler naturally asked him why he was undoing a lifetime of work, and the weaver replied that there was a flaw in the stitching. The traveler looked closely, but he couldn't see the mistake. The weaver said, it didn't matter, that even if no one else knew it was there, he knew and it made every stitch that came after it false. I'm unraveling my rug, Alex, so I can start again. Hello? Yes, Kat. Y yes, honey, I know all about it. I know what Peter's done. More importantly, I know what he's going to do. Can you imagine how different psychoanalysis would be if Freud hadn't disavowed the seduction theory? Georgie? What? Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was elsewhere. Front seat of a 65 Mustang, perchance? Try my kitchen last night. Trevor's barely speaking. Because of us? He says you're too young for me. But the only reason I'm interested in you is because I'm insecure about being single and going back to school. Would you help me maintain the illusion of being 25 again? Trevor said all this. For somebody who's not speaking, he said a whole lot. Is he right? Oh, of course not. Well, mate, I don't know. I'm just trying to get my life back together again. Obviously, I'm not doing a very good job. Because your son doesn't approve? We haven't done anything. No, but you'd like to. You're projecting. Thanks, doctor. Well, wouldn't you? Why? Because I let you kiss me? You kissed me, too, if I recall. Yeah, I know, but... But, but, but what? What was it? Were you doing me a favor? Was it a mercy kiss? Hardly. Then what was it? An experiment? A research project? The approach avoidance conflict in middle-aged housewives? I'm not middle-aged to anyone except you, because you're so damn young. And I am not a housewife. Then what are you? Confused, all right? No need to be. You have a son with all the answers. Listen to him. <laughs> What are you doing? Packing. Already? You asked me to leave, remember? I'll be out of your way first thing in the morning. Could you hand me that t-shirt, please? Yeah. Thanks. I, um, I washed that sweater that your mom gave you. It's in your closet. Thanks. Anytime. Read. It's all right, I'm okay. Have you, um, have you seen my toothbrush? Read, please don't cry. Just say, first my husband kicks me out, and then my mother, and now you. I just don't know where else to go. There must be someone, a friend. Yeah. Too bad I don't have a sister. <laughs> you know, um, when we were little, I used to look at our moms and think, that must be so great to know that they'll always have each other. I guess when I moved in here, I, I was 
kind of hoping that we could be like that. You mean like sisters? <laughs> sisters. But obviously that's not gonna happen now. <laughs> FBI. We're here to arrest Peter Goodman. Sorry about this, Mrs. Barker. All right, Peter's made his decision. He wants to surrender. He's in the library making a call to his family. I'll go get him. We'll come with you. Peter. It's over between us. I'm leaving. Forget about me. Peter. He's gone. Peter, please. I didn't expect to ever see you again. I believe the FBI doesn't either. You're not following me, if that's what you mean. And quite frankly, I wish you wouldn't Alex, either. Wait a minute, wait. You betrayed my confidence, Peter. You ran away from me twice. That's enough. This time is different. This time I want you to know why. Peter, I don't want to know why. Alex, listen to me. I had every intention of turning myself in. I swear to it. But then I realized that if I did, all anyone would hear about is that some old hippie protester was arrested. They'd think I was a murderer. There was a war going on. What you did was tragic, but it was about saving lives, not destroying them. If I let them cuff me and take me away, no one would ever know that, Alex. An innocent man was killed. You can't expect to be forgiven. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm asking to be heard. I want people to know. I can do that for you, Peter. I can make sure people know. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep up the group. Don't dawdle. On the left, you'll see the Witzig bedroom. Notice the color-coordinated dust ruffle, the wrinkle-free sheets. Uh-uh, awesome touch. Very impressive. Everything has been preserved exactly as it was when Georgie was married. Oh. After she divorced, she never let anyone into her life or her bed. Oh. She slept here alone and unloved until the day she died. Oh, Next, sad. we'll visit Georgie's knitting room where she sat and rocked around the clock. Oh. Mom. Trev. I have to go. So soon? I'll miss my bus. Hey, Trevor, wait. Oh, wait. Hey, Trev. Come on. I don't want you to leave feeling angry. Who says I'm angry? You don't have to say it. I know it. I'm your mother. But I'm also me. I've got feelings and desires, just like everyone else. I don't want to talk about this. Well, that's not fair, since you decided to judge me. I didn't judge you when you decided to enlist in the army, even though God knows I wasn't thrilled, because you said it's what you wanted, what you needed. You need to date a guy half your age? Not half, two thirds. And yes, right now, if what I need is to explore and, and, and take some chances and hopefully to grow, then what the hell business is it of yours? 
You're right. It's none of my business. Trevor. Oh, Kat, let me help you with that. After what you did last night? Kat, I am sorry I broke your window. Are you kidding? You saved my life. You're a hero. Come on, you're getting a little carried away. I would have been carried away feet first with the sheet over my face if you hadn't been here. Thank you, Reed. You're welcome. Now, I better get going. Going? Well, you did tell me to move out. Well, you know, that was a mistake. But you said I was a slob. Maybe I'm too fastidious. I didn't make dinner. I'm on a diet. Oh. Reed, remember what you said about always wanting a sister? Well, I've always wanted one, too. More than anything. Please stay. Well, yeah, if it's what you really want. Oh, it is. OK. <laughs> OK. Well, you come over here, sit down, put your feet up. Is there anything I can get for you? Well, gosh, now that you mention it, I am out of shampoo. I'll go get you some. And, oh, hairspray. Back in a gym. <laughs> Cat? Yeah? Thanks, sis. <sighs> so, any idea what could have caused that gas leak? It almost looks as if someone took a wrench and loosened this connection on purpose. No kidding. Now, who would do something like that? Brian. Got your message? Come on in. I just wanted to tell you, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been so... Passive aggressive. In the future, I won't be so... Obsessive. I've never needed a translator before. That's OK. Sometimes even young aspiring psychologists have trouble putting their feelings into words. Hmm. And that goes for not so young aspiring psychologists also. I'll make you a deal. Hmm. I'll forgive you for being your age if you forgive me for being mine. Deal. Only I never really was your age. By the time I was 25, I had a husband and two children. And before that, I had a mother and three sisters to take care of. So you were too busy being grown up to ever enjoy your youth? I guess you could say that. You never were a cheerleader, <sighs> never went steady. Afraid not. Everyone out all night? Call me goody two-shoes. Never made love to a boy your family didn't approve of? No. But I'm hoping to. We're not going anywhere. I'm just taking him over to the stage. Just think, in a few minutes, you're going to be you again for the first time in 25 years. I don't know if I can be that person, or if he still exists. He does. Who was I, Alex? You're the only person that still remembers. You were Peter Goodwin, a passionate young poet. Your passion is like fuel, sending me soaring through the universe. You believed in truth, and beauty, and love. A <laughs> fool. No. An idealist who lost his way. Your eyes are like stars, showing me the way home. 
I knew I was right to come back to you. You're on, Alex. Three, two, and one. Hello, and welcome to Alex Now. Today, we have a tragic story, but one with a hopeful ending. I'd like to introduce you to Peter Goodwin, my long lost friend who's finally found his way home. I'm Peter Goodwin. I've been on the run for 25 years. If it wasn't for Alex Barker, I wouldn't be here now. It was 1972. I was a student. There was a war going on. Next on Sisters. I only have one tiny question. What's that? Who the hell are you? You gotta remember Falconer. Who? He was one of your husbands. One of my husbands? You mean she could be like this forever? The doctors say there's no way of knowing for sure. Someone has to be with her 24 hours a day. So I can be here till noon. I can come over after that. I miss my mom. Teddy? She's been gone since she left the hospital. She doesn't even know who she is. Any sign of Teddy? Not even a breadcrumb. Oh. I wish there was more I could do to help. Well, maybe there is. 